Donald, Donald, please, for the love of our friendship, I beg you to reconsider this. Be quiet, Barack. I'm trying to focus on the road. Joe, when's my next turn? In 0.3 miles, you're going to want to turn left onto Tilden Street. Thank you, Joseph. No problem, pal. Donald, it's the middle of the night, and you've had so much food today, an ungodly amount. I considered putting it into a calorie calculator, but I'm genuinely frightened of what the result will be. Your point, Barack? My point is, maybe this quick trip to Wawa, as you put it, can wait for another day. Barack, I already told you that I'm just getting a little snack, nothing major. Barack, to be fair, I seconded the trip to Wawa. I could use a coffee to keep myself awake. I'm already sensing the Sandman spell coming over me, and I have a lot more story to tell. Donald, I'm not ready to watch you die. Whoa, you're getting way too dramatic with this, Barack. Oh, shit. Would you look at that, Barack? I almost crashed. Clearly, it's your worrying that's far more dangerous than my eating habits. And I miss Tilden Street. I'm going to have to take a U-turn. No, you can't. There's a double yellow line. Just wait for the GPS to find an alternate route. Barack, don't be such a Nancy. What's the worst that could happen? See, I told you not to make a U-turn. Chill, Barack. Do you really think that a cop is going to give a ticket to the greatest president in American history? He might. What would you do then? I don't know, Joe. Do you still carry around the Bulldog 44? Nah, sorry. Kamala learned I had it and made the Secret Service forcibly disarm me. It was actually kind of thrilling being at the mercy of a group of large men. Not gonna lie. Hmm, I'm gonna put a pin in that for now, but as for the cop, I'll just smooth talk him. Watch and learn, Barack. Good evening, can I see your license and... Wait, it's you three? Hi, it's Rob. Donald, drive, drive, drive. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. What the fuck is he doing here? I thought he was still at Rutgers. I don't know, but we have to, I don't know. Go into hiding, flee the country. Maybe we should call Sarah Paxton. She clearly knows how to make everyone forget about your existence. All good suggestions that we can discuss over some Wawa. You've got to be kidding me. How's this? Does anyone want to split a pizza? And by split, I mean one of you has a slice and I eat the rest. I've been dying to try the new ones they have here, but just haven't gotten the chance yet. Donald, you've already eaten multiple pizzas today. Okay, fine, whatever. What about a buffalo mac and cheese? We can get a large, and if you chip in, I'll let you snag a noodle or two. If you insist on having a fourth or maybe fifth dinner, I lost count, you could at least get something healthy and low calorie like a salad. That's actually not a bad idea, Barack. The cheeseburger salads here are pretty good. You know that's not what I meant. Barack, sometimes you just have to let things go. Do I want to add extra hamburger meat? Obviously, that's a no-brainer. Hmm, but should I get fries too? Yeah, I'll do it. You only live once after all. Did I just hear you mention fries? You know it. What's a salad without fries? A healthy meal option. Jesus, Barack, calm the fuck down. I'll have you know that John Candy ate fries with every meal and he lived to the ripe old age of 43. Now, are you doing regular fries or chili cheese because I could be on board with the latter? Damn, Joe, thank you for reminding me. I completely forgot about the chili cheese ones. Glad to be of help. But if you're sharing them, I should probably get two orders just to be safe. Makes sense to me. Okay, my order is in. I'm gonna go pay for this. While I'm gone, you might as well do the recap, Joe, because I think I got the gist at this point. Wanna do the recap again, Barack? No, I was fine doing it just the once. This time is all yours, Joe. Oh boy, hopefully I still know how. The year was 1912, and I found myself on the run from the law. With a policeman hot on my trail, a chance encounter with American millionaire Reginald Todford III, resulting in his offering me a ticket aboard an ocean liner, seemed like a gift from God. Little did I know that that ocean liner was the Titanic. Even worse, the policeman was on board too with a waitress by his side, and they were doing everything they could to capture me. At the same time, Onyango Obama and Frederick Trump formed an alliance and eventual friendship with the goal of helping Onyango sleep with a white woman. However, all our problems suddenly became minuscule when the Titanic struck the fateful iceberg and it became apparent the ship would sink. The immediate chaos upended everything we knew, and when we last left off, I was seconds away from drowning in the Titanic's prison as Onyango, Frederick, and the policemen all rushed to my location. Oh, and Reginald just got some pussy. Goodness, Reginald, I'm so worried. Do you think we'll be all right? 
Of course, my sweet. I'm sure the ship will hold, and if it doesn't, we clearly have more than enough lifeboats for everyone aboard. Dear God, I can't believe we're sinking. We don't have nearly enough lifeboats for everyone aboard. Mr Ismay, what did you say about the ship sinking? Is that true? Oh, uh, well, you see... Don't you worry, Mrs Robertson. The crew has everything under control. I'm not sure how that could be the case when you don't have enough lifeboats. That is quite customary. Lifeboats are more often than not just used to ferry passengers from one ship to another, not to hold everyone indefinitely, and I'm sure such a ship will arrive very shortly. That's good to hear, so one is already on the way. I suppose that depends on your definition of the words, on the way. Fuck me, Reginald. We're all going to drown, aren't we? Mrs. Robertson, calm down. If it eases your mind, I have a few spots in lifeboat number seven, which will be the first one lowered in only a few minutes. The captain said to load women and children first, but I could accommodate both you and your husband. Can't risk losing a famous actor before his greatest role ever, can I? Speaking of, where is your husband? My husband? Oh, you mean Robert. He's... I don't know where he is, actually. You don't know where your husband is, and you're currently standing suspiciously close to the third richest man in the world. I think I see what's going on here, Mrs. Robertson. Well, if you want that spot in the lifeboat, don't take too long to decide. Good evening. Okay, let's get you into that lifeboat, Lila. No, Reginald, wait just a second. What is it? When he mentioned Robert, I just thought... Thought what? Thought maybe I should warn him about the ship sinking. That's all. Why would you warn a German spy? I'd say let him drown. It'd serve that whole boorish country right. Robert's no spy, and I don't think he's German either. He's English, I think. Can't really remember why he has an American accent, though. If he's not a spy, why is he after Mr. Joseph? I never got all the details, but Robert's a Bobby, and your friend did something or other with some schoolgirls, or maybe it was orphans. Who knows? Slander. Mr. Joseph is an upstanding citizen. He'd never do such a thing. Whatever. It doesn't matter. I just want to... I just have to see him. Robert, I mean. So come along. Lila, slow down. Wait, hold up. Ugh, what is it? I had no idea that the ship was filling with water this quickly. We need to turn back or we're gonna drown. No, we can't turn back until I have Joe Biden in chains. Listen, dude. If this guy you're after is in the prison, he's gonna be dead soon anyway. Isn't that good enough for you? No way. Would you be content with God doing your job for you? I mean, yeah, probably that'd be pretty cool. Well, that's where you and I differ. Let's keep going. Frederick, are you down here? It's me on Yango. The ship is sinking. We have to get out of here. This water is getting pretty deep. He couldn't have... Could he? No, you have to be positive on Yango. You haven't even made it to the prison yet. If he's anywhere, that's where he must be. Captain, why are we bothering with this silliness of lifeboats? As far as I can tell, this giant ship is a much safer bet in these frigid seas than some rickety contraption made of plywood and glue. It may seem that way, but I ask that you and the other passengers trust me, Mrs. Brown. I know what I'm doing. Very well, but if I catch a cold, you're the one I'll come complaining to. If the worst thing that happens tonight is you getting a cold, I'd be happy to hear that complaint. Mrs. Brown, there's a spot in lifeboat number six. Come along. Hold your horses. Us ladies aren't as fast on account of these ridiculous dresses. Mr. Fleet, I want you in that lifeboat. You can assist Quartermaster Hitchens. Yes, sir. Mr. Fleet, is something wrong? I can't help feeling responsible, sir. It was me up in that crow's nest. If only I could have seen it. Just a moment sooner. Perhaps we would have had enough time to... Such was the wreck of the Hesperus, in the midnight and the snow. Christ save us all from a death like this, on the reef of Norman's Woe. Excuse me, sir. What was that? A poem, Mr. Fleet. It's called The Wreck of the Hesperus, and it's about a skipper who ignores the warnings of his men. In the end, the ship he's piloting sinks because of him, and he loses his only daughter as a consequence. I don't understand, sir. What is it supposed to mean? It means that the responsibility of this ship's sinking is going to fall solely on pride. I still don't think I... Goodbye, Mr. Fleet. I thank you for your service. Fleet, hurry up.
Goodbye, Captain. That's at least one soul saved. Wait, hold up, we're here. Really? Where is he then? He's right through that door. Finally, I have him cornered and there's no escape. I had hoped to make this all very official, Mr. Biden. But considering the circumstances, I regret that your execution must be summary. Okay, well, it seems you're all good, so I'll just leave you to your apostrophizing. Frederick, are you down here? It's me, Onyango. Onyango? Thank God. I'm so glad that I found you. Onyango, it's really you. Wait, you've been looking for me? Oh, uh, yeah, I have. Not for anything weird. I just figured since I was the one who brought you aboard... Don't worry, Onyango. You don't have to explain yourself, friend. I was looking for you, too. That was until this lunatic roped me into his weird mission. Trust me. There's nothing remotely weird about what you're going to see on the other side of this door. It's all pure evil. That brings us to June of 323 BC. I poisoned Alexander the Great because he mocked a new hat I really liked. That same month, I looked the other way as Alexander's widow, Roxana, murdered his other widow. I did that because she saw me in a compromising position with the daughter of her chambermaid. Then... For the love of Sangjae, please stop. I don't know how many more horrifying stories I can hear. Don't be so negative, friend Bohain. Friend Joe is simply trying to unburden his soul before he meets his maker. Thanks, second Chinese guy. Or are you the first one? Whatever, you're right about me needing to unburden my soul because unless I confess a lot more things, even the most benevolent deity wouldn't spare me from eternal torment. Good. That whole thing you did to the Neanderthals is enough alone to warrant a spike up the ass for all eternity. If you think that was bad, wait until I tell you why there aren't any indigenous Icelanders. Pull on three. One. What's that? Two. Three. Praise be to Yong Wang. We're free. Come on, Haresh. We have to get to the opening of Fenway Park. You know it, friend Bohain. Hopefully they have Cracker Jacks. Thank you, gents. I was sure in a sticky situation back there until you came along. And I know a thing or two about sticky situations after what I did in the Turkish bath. Wait, aren't you that German and black I met on deck? Yes, but you could call me a black person instead of just a black. I'll consider it. Anyway, nice to see you again. I better be going. Not so fast, Mr. Biden. Oh, fuck me. It's that fucking cop again. Did you two lead him here? Trust me when I say that those who cross me rarely live to see their 150th birthday. I don't think that uh, anyone really lives to see their 150th birthday, so that's less of a threat and more of a factual statement. No, some Africans actually do live to be that old. We've got special herbs and stuff. Onyango, I like you, but if you think that herbs can double a human lifespan, then I'd start to believe some of the things they say about your people. Enough of this. Joe Biden, I, wielding the authority of His Majesty, King George V, hereby sentence you to die where you stand. I guess drowning will have to do. You don't think he's actually gonna... Oh, fuck. He's actually drowning him. What the fuck, dude? Seriously, you're insane, you know that? Did you think this was a game or something? I have clearly stated my goal since the beginning. I know, but I thought it was like maybe a metaphor, or you'd have a change of heart at the last minute realizing that every life is sacred. This isn't some fucking fable. No one is realizing shit today. Frederick, we have to help him. I mean, we can't just let this happen. I agree with you in spirit, Onyango, but I'm more of a lover than a fighter. No, that sounds gay. I mean, I prefer loving men to fighting them. Nope, that's even worse. All right, if you won't do it, then it's up to me. Hey, you, lay off him. Or what? Or I'm gonna do to you what I should have done to Akello. Who the fuck is Akello? Onyango, you just knocked that guy out flat. I know. It feels pretty good to stand up for once instead of running away. Phew, I was almost a goner. I guess I owe you my thanks yet again. Don't even mention it. I just don't like bullies. Well, that one-liner is sure bound to end up in the history books. But I think it's best we forget it for now, since the aforementioned bully is at our feet. And I think he's starting to come, too. Sounds good to me. Yeah, let's get going. Damn you all. I guess I have three executions to carry out tonight. Any word back from the Californian? No, and I don't understand. They have to be very close, probably even close enough to see us. They should have at least seen the rockets we've been firing off. I can't believe I'm stuck aboard this stupid boat having to keep watch all night. What am I even watching for? We're in the middle of the bloody ocean. I don't know anymore. 
Maybe I should have stayed with the Eons. No, Cordon, they were never going to give you any respect. You're better off here on Earth. What was that? Oh, it's just that damn boat again. Why are you firing rockets, you stupid boat? No one cares. Clearly the nautical life isn't for me. I'd be much better suited for something in the spotlight. Perhaps I should take a look at getting into comedy or something like that. Yeah, that's actually a very good idea. I'm certainly much funnier than any human could possibly be. Let me see if I can think of a joke. Hmm. Oh, I got one. What do you call the greatest thing in the world? James, but to you lot, I'm Mr. Corden. Yes, that's very funny. I can practically hear the laughs now. Okay, Joe, I'm calling bullshit on that one right there. Barack, I thought we were done with this. Joe's story is clearly true. Stop trying to die on this hill. Seriously, Barack, you're just like these guys I knew with big noses who wouldn't leave Jesus alone. No, let me cook this time. I think I finally caught you lacking. But first, fuck Joe. Guys with big noses? Clearly you're not getting the Jewish vote. What does that have to do with the Jews? I'm talking about King Herod and Pontius Pilate. Those fuckers had massive schnozzes. Clearly an attempt at saving your ass, but whatever. Get on with it, Barack. Joe, you just alleged that James Corden was aboard the SS California the night of the Titanic sinking, right? That's correct. But you didn't even know James Corden was an alien in 1912. You found out about it the same time as us. What's your point, Barack? Barack, tread carefully. You're grasping at straws, and you're going to end up falling on your face because of it. No, I don't think I will. Mm -hmm. My point is, how could you have ever found out about James Corden being on the Californian? I mean, it's kind of obvious, Barack. How so? Barack James Corden went on Stephen Colbert and told everyone he was an alien, among other things. He, uh, what are you talking about? Barack, I tried to warn you, but you wouldn't listen. What? No, that's not possible. I guess I'll show him the clip, Joe. Oh, yeah, I've done tons of cool stuff. Like I was working on a boat in 1912 when this dumb ship kept firing rockets off. It was really annoying. I didn't find out until years later that it was the Titanic and they were distress signals, but whatever. Who cares? Okay, Joe, you can continue with the story. What, Barack? No more smart-ass remarks? Just continue the story, please. Robert, where are you? The ship is sinking and you need to come with me. My sweet, what are you doing? Oh God, Reginald, you must think I'm a bloody idiot, but I can't leave him to die. Sure, he's an awful person, but I'm not, and I don't want to give up on a friend. Even if that word barely means anything when talking about Robert. But you heard what he said. There aren't enough boats for everyone. You can't waste time getting in one. I know, I know. It's all so ridiculous. But if there's even a small chance that I can save him, I have to take it. Lila, I... Reginald, I want you to go. This is my problem, not yours. With all your money, I'm sure they'd let you in a boat. You don't have to risk your life just because I'm risking mine. If you think that I would abandon the woman I love, you clearly don't know Reginald Todford III. I mean, yeah, that's true. I've known you for like 12 hours. That doesn't matter. Because wherever you go, I'll go. You sure are an odd duck, Reginald. Fine, come along. Robert, where are you? Robert! German spy, where are you? Right this way, ladies. We need to get you two into a lifeboat. I'm not so sure. Is it safe? It's extraordinarily safe, miss. As the chairman of the White Star Line, I swear by the reliability of our lifeboats. If Mr. Ismay says it's safe, Lily, then it must be. Very well, Officer Murdoch. I'll get in. Wonderful, ladies. Now watch your step. And there we are. Good work there, Mr. Ismay. Thank you, Officer Murdoch. You know, this is all quite exhilarating. If it weren't for the imminent peril, it would be almost fun. I don't know if I'd exactly call a ship sinking fun, but to each his own. But all good things must come to an end, don't they? I think it's about time I took a spot in a lifeboat myself. Mr. Ismay, I wouldn't advise that. It couldn't be a good look for the chairman of the White Star Line. After all, the passengers must come first, and I dare say, we've only loaded a quarter of the women. Yes, but I'm really more of a passenger, aren't I? Mr. Ismay. No, no, you're right. Forget I said anything. It was a silly idea. Hello friend Officer Murdoch. Got an extra two spots in that boat there? Preferably something with a little legroom. I'm a big man and I like to stretch out. You two? What are you doing here? You're supposed to be locked in the brig. Yeah, about that. I can't believe you just left us down there, asshole. We could have drowned without seeing the opening of Fenway Park. So circling back to those seats, my friend? I regret to inform you that lifeboats are currently for women and children only. Well, them and any very important men like famous actor Robert Robertson. Speaking of, I sure hope he's all right. What about children at heart? 
No. Is there any system for challenging someone for their spot? Like if I totally wreck a woman or child, can I take their place? Also no. Now if you'll excuse me, I have a lifeboat to launch. Shit, Haresh, what are we gonna do? Don't worry friend Bohayan. I have an idea. This ship is a maze and every corridor looks exactly the same. How will we ever get on deck? Frederick, you're an officer. Where do we go? Technically, I'm a former officer, and even that was a ruse made up by you. But Mr. Black, aren't you like an engineer or something? You should know where we need to go, too. Yes, but the lifeboats are on the boat deck, which is restricted to first and second class as well as officers. I've barely been up there. Plus, I'm having trouble orienting myself with all this water. God damn it. Well, I led that crazy guy down here. I have to be able to make the return trip. I just need to think. Fuck me, this is so hard. I'm not used to using my brain like this. Most of my mental energy is devoted to opera and the locations of brothels. Then don't think as Frederick Trump. Think as 7th Officer Donaldson of the Titanic. He would know how to get out of here. Onyango, have you literally gone insane? That was all make-believe. Was it make-believe when you stopped that fight between John Jacob Astor and Benjamin Guggenheim about who had the smallest penis? Or what about that night you spent in charge of the bridge? or all those passengers who came to love you and swore that they'd always sail on Donaldson ships. Yes, no, I don't know. I was just doing what came naturally. Then you know what to do. Onyango, you're gonna have to spell it out because I have no idea what you're getting at. Take a breath, calm down, and pretend that it's yesterday, and you've just been told you're needed on the boat deck. When you're ready, lead the way. I can't see this helping, but okay, I'll give it a try. Yo, what's up, Jimmy? How's it going? What do you mean I need to go up to the boat deck? Why? Oh, fuck me. Are you seriously saying that Molly Brown's butthole stitches tore and she spewed hot shit everywhere? That's fucking disgusting. But anyway, why can't you do it? You're higher up than me. You're really pulling rank on me, your best buddy Donaldson? Fine, Jimmy, I'll take care of it, but you owe me. Now, which way is the boat deck? Wait, I actually know where it is. I can't believe it. Come on, we have no time to waste. They were just here. I can smell it. I missed them yet again. I'll never catch up at this rate. There must be something else I can do. That's it. Based on where they're heading, they'll go through the grand staircase. I know a shortcut there. That's where I'll ambush them. Damn you. Let us aboard a lifeboat this instant. I'm sorry, sir, but the lifeboats are for women and children only. I don't care. We are very important businessmen. The world would crumble without us. If you don't believe me, ask the captain. Captain? Captain? Captain Smith? Oh, what is it? I'm sorry I was a bit lost in thought. I was trying to explain to these men that you ordered us to evacuate women and children only. Did I? For some reason I'm having trouble remembering. Oh yes, I did. I did say that. Fuck you. We'll just jump in anyway. Get back or I'll shoot you like dogs. <laughs> oh, damn you all. Captain Smith, are you all right? You seem out of sorts. No, I think the stress might be... Please excuse me. We're ready to launch. I want one of you in this boat. Moody? Have Logo instead. What? Are you sure? You seem to need it more than me. But... You go. I'll get in another boat. Hurry up and decide. I need one of you now. I'll go. Thank you, Moody. You're a good man. See you on the other side. See you on the other side, Lo. For God's sake, we're back at the staircase. He must not be on this level. We need to go lower. But Cream Puff, the lower levels are nearly flooded. That just means we don't have time to lose. It's this way. Follow me. Oh, hey, Reginald. Nice to see you're still alive. Mr. Joseon, is it really you? Huh? It's you? Man, this is pretty awkward. Wonderful. People I recognize. Have any of you seen Robert? You mean that lunatic you were with? Last we saw him, he tried to drown the old man, and my boy Onyango got him good. I totally did. Does that impress you, baby? Don't call my wife baby, you scoundrel. Wife? You're married, Reginald? No, not really. It's a long story, and there's no time to get into it. Just point to where you last saw Robert. You're a genius, Haresh. Oh, look at his friend, Joe. What a happy coincidence. What exactly am I, uh, looking at here? Hey, buddy, my eyes aren't on my chest. Chinese guys, why are you in wigs? You must be mistaken, friend, Joe. No guys here, only two pretty ladies on the way to get in a lifeboat. And we're kind of in a hurry, so if you'll excuse us. 
That was weird. It sure was, but back to talking about Robert. At last, I have found you, Joe Biden. I think you've said that like three times now. Pretty sure you don't know what the words at last mean. Perhaps not, but I do know what the words capital punishment mean. Oh, Robert, I finally found you. The ship is sinking. We need to hurry and get in a boat. Officer Murdoch said he'd... Lila, shut up. I'm not leaving this boat until Joe Biden is dead. Robert, forget that. You have so much to live for. Just let him go and... Not gonna lie, I didn't believe the ship was actually sinking until this instant. Holy shit, things are really heating up. We must be just about at the end, aren't we? Yep, we're getting close. I'd love to keep going, but Donald probably needs some more food. Maybe Denny's, Waffle House. Actually, I'm pretty good. This is probably the last food I'm getting tonight. Really, Donald? God, I'm proud of you, man. Don't make it gay, Barack. Well, if you guys want to just keep going, where was I? The ship started to tilt. It was ever so slight, but regardless, we knew it was almost the end. Then... At last, I found you three.